Let's review and flip through some history curriculums for kindergarten to third grade. Because Abeka is such a well-known curriculum, I wanna start with this one just like I did in my math curriculum review. Now, Abeka should know what they're doing, right? So I got their book. I found it offline actually for $5 from a swap shop because it is a non-consumable product. So when I got it, I was flipping through it and I noticed that all these sections are really short. If you look here in the scope and sequence even, you can see how quickly it jumps from one topic to the next. And within there, there's really just little tidbits and facts of information. Now this is traditional schooling. We feed our children facts and they're supposed to just remember the dates and things. This is not the approach that I decided to take with my children, but if you are looking for just a way to get through history and make sure to check the boxes off, Abeka might be a really good choice for you. You're only looking at about five minutes a day of reading this and then moving on to your next thing, which is really nice because your children won't get burnt out from history, but I also don't think that they're gonna learn to love it the way that I want my children to love the story that God has written. After using Abeka for a few days, I went to my friend and said, this isn't gonna work for us. She recommended History for Little Pilgrims. This is put out by Christian Liberty Press and we ended up finishing out our year using this book. Now she had circled these sections with what to do for day one and day two and really each section is just about four paragraphs. So again, really short, throw it in your morning basket, talk about it. This one takes the approach of starting with the creation story and going through modern times. Um, and then at the end of the week, you have some questions that you can review with your kids. So I was able to do this along with doing some more in-depth reading uh, through our read alouds that I wanted to do with our kids. I do think that this is a really great option. Again, you can get it used, I think even brand new, it's not very expensive. And I really did like history for little pilgrims. After experiencing these two, I picked up home learning year by year. Now, if you haven't heard me talk about this book before, this is a book where each chapter tells you what is expected for your child to know in that grade level. And you'll see in here that with history, it's really ambiguous. All curriculums and schools will kind of go at it at a different approach. Some might choose to go chronologically, others will choose to start with American history. Master Books chooses to start with local, social understanding of what is going on in the world around you. And that first book is called My Story. They're going to be learning about their family tree, where they came from, where they live, and the community around them, and then their country, and so forth. And this is a really cute, gentle, easy way to teach your kids history. I did really find it appealing, although we never chose to use it. Um, it does, like most master books, have what I consider to be a little bit more busy work, um, handwriting and things in there that we use in other areas and I just didn't need. Uh, it's also just not the approach that my family chose to take, but I do think it's a beautiful Charlotte Mason approach to history. Something that I love about master books, you are going to get a lot of God put in there in your history um, because it is God's story. It is his story, right? So I do trust master books with that and appreciate what they have. So that's a large piece of being worth it. So this is a really, creative interactive way but you're just looking at more time here um and i don't want kids to become bored with history and feeling like they have to get through this big book i've talked about that in my math one when it comes to big books that you're trying to get through for the whole year i think that's just a lot of weight and pressure to put on a kid and i want my kids to enjoy history so we didn't go with master books I understand why some people do. I think it's a great option, which is why I'm sharing it with you here. Another one that we did try is knotgrass history. And what appealed to me about knotgrass history is that 
It's got these chunks of biographies within the stories. They have five books. I think it's five books that they recommend you reading aloud to your children while you're going through this curriculum. And man, just reading those chapter books aloud as a family is so rich and wonderful. And I really appreciate that about Knotgrass History that they promote those narrations. Um, they also have activities that they recommend for the kids to do that go along with that lesson and dances and music. This pulled me in so much to be able to hear music from that time and learn how to dance to it too. I thought would be so cool. And it is geared towards some of these younger ages. Uh, they are incorporated in it, but I didn't think that it was very fitting for my kids. Um, I thought the biographies were a little dry. Maybe that's because they couldn't get deep enough in just a couple paragraphs. So we decided to set Knotgrass aside. I am hoping to come back to it in election season when we do American history, um, because I, I do think that Knotgrass is beautiful. Again, Christian curriculum. So we're going to be tying God into all of that. And it is a really well structured history curriculum that may be worth looking into. If all of this seems overwhelming, it did to me too. And one thing that I found to be really helpful was to create a notebook or use home learning year by year. And alongside the grade, mark curriculums that I might be interested in pursuing in the future. I could typically tell like, like uh, Story of the World, which is the next one that I want to show you. Story of the World isn't something that I want for my younger kids. But when we get into middle school, I do want to look into it more because that's the point when I want to start going chronologically with my children through history. That's what I've decided. But many families do choose to do Story of the World for their younger kids, for this K through third grade level. And what's really nice about it is that you can do it with your whole family, K through high school. Every day you're just reading four to six pages as a family and you're going chronologically. So you're starting at the beginning and going through the end, which will be covered in four years. This is book one, so it's ancient times, from the earliest nomads to the last Roman emperor. It also comes along with an activity book. This has coloring pages and other things for your kids of different ages to be able to maybe do while you're reading to them. If you have kids that are spread out throughout different ages, Story of the World could be really appealing. I believe that there's also a book list to go along with it so that you can be reading aloud to your family in addition to this. I think that this is a really well set up curriculum that would be appealing. I've just chosen to not do it now. If you're interested in seeing the approach that I have decided to take with my children that does not involve any of this curriculum, then you're going to want to subscribe and hit the notification bell so that you don't miss when that video comes out. Until then, click here to see another curriculum review.